Okay. I think uh, I think we are on air now. Um, thank you very much. I am Francisco Serrano. I am uh, uh, operations COO of Auditor Nacional Lunario and uh, booking manager for both of the venues. I am very pleased to have here at this uh, panel. Uh, dedicated to talk about the languages and uh, the convergence of languages in the performing arts. And I would very much like to introduce Mariana Aymeric, the head of the Festival Internacional Cervantino, who is about to Hello, give us a welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you all. Really, Mariana, toca ya. Gracias por estar Gracias aquí. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Thank you very much from Australia, from Spain, from, from Montreal. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. You will be that great hands. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco, for, for coordinating this panel and, 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 to, and for, for having all of, of us here. Thank you, everyone, who are watching this uh, abroad, um, around the, 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 the panel. Thank you. And, um, this this uh, panel will be transmit. Um, trans uh, sorry, we hear everyone is talking to me, and I my my concentration. I just want to want to tell you that I'm very great and very grateful for for having you here. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you, everyone. I have to go because I'm running a festival right now. <laughs> but thank you very much. You you are in a great hands. Thank you all, and I will I will follow the panel in my way. Thank you very much. Thank Gracias. you, Mariana. Gracias. Uh, well, uh, thank you to 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 Mariana, who is uh, the uh, general director of Festival Internacional Cervantino. I would like very much to introduce our guests here today at this panel. Uh, first of all, we have Mariana. First, I, I want to make one of the, uh, one uh, and, and just a, a short note. This panel will be held to all of the people that is watching us uh, in this uh, live transmission in in YouTube. This panel will be held in English, and uh, it will be uh, with subtitles. It will, be, it will be available with subtitles next Sunday at noon in Mexico City time. And uh, I would very much like to give this uh, introduction, uh, this uh, um, welcome to Mariana Garza. Mariana is a Mexican singer, actress, and theater producer. He is, uh, she is co-director of Mexico's uh, series theater venues, Teatro Milan and Foro Lucerna. Uh, she is also producer and strategic development director of the theater award ceremony, Premios Metropolitanos de Teatro. Apart from being an active actress and presenter in television series and live shows, theater and film, she is also a producer. And in 2014, she acquired and reconstructed Mexico City's longtime renowned theater venue, Teatro Milana for Lucerna. She is currently an actress in Mexico's first immersive theater experience designed with a social distancing approach, Elena Teatro Milan, 1985. Thank you very much, Mariana, for joining us today. Gracias, Gracias Mariana, por, por estar con nosotros el día de hoy. Gracias. Valentí Oviedo. Valentí is general manager of Gran Teatro del Liceo de, de Barcelona in Spain. He started his career in the marketing and corporate financial areas of the industrial and consumer sector, but thanks to his clear relationship with the arts, in 2008, he began to manage two of the cities of Manre Manresa's municipal venues, Cursal Theater and the Conservatory Theater. Later, he was manager of the consortium of the Barcelona's music center, L'Auditori, house of the Barcelona Symphony Orchestra. There, he was recognized due to the improvement of the entity. In July 2016, he was appointed manager of Barcelona's Instituto de Cultura. He is currently general manager of the Gran Teatro del Liceo, a position he was appointed to in March 2018. Welcome, Valentí. Thank you very much for the invitation. Charlie Kosh, Charlie Kosh um, is a Chief Executive Officer of Brisbane Festival in Brisbane, Australia. 
In 2020, the B Brisbane Festival, usually the most anticipated event of the year, was one of the first major arts festivals in the world to be delivered during the COVID-19 pandemic. In doing so, employed over a thousand artists and art workers, commissioned 28 new works, delivered 573 performances across all 190 suburbs of Brisbane. Before being appointed Brisbane Festival CEO, Charlie was the general manager of Circa Contemporary Circus from 2013 to 2018. His leadership was in instrumental in the organization accelerated growth. Circa's award-winning works have been seen in 40 countries. Thank you, Charlie, for joining us today. Thank you, um, you. Um, Oxenari, uh, artistic programmer, Festival International de Jazz de Montréal, Montreal, Canada. He was born and raised in Marciac, France, house of the acclaimed festival Jazz in Marciac. Moran Oxenari moved to Canada in 2006, where he first worked as a local jazz label before creating his own booking and management agency. He has worked with artists like Tigran Hamasian, Sophie Hunger, and Eric Trufa. He joined the Montreal Festival in 2013. Thank you, Moran, for being with us today. I really appreciate all of you, especially for uh, distracting from all your duties and, uh, and all the things that you should be doing today, for example, or, or now, or right now and uh, the change for those who doesn't uh, who are not aware it's uh, seven o'clock in barcelona in the evening it's uh, three o'clock in the morning of a friday in brisbane thank Hello. you charlie <laughs> oh, <I'm shaking. laughs> and uh and I, it's uh it's one o'clock in Montreal. so it's, it's 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 very easy thank you for, for all of you. So I would very much like to start with uh, ladies first, asking mm -hmm. Mariana the first question about this immersive play. Mariana, in, the, in esta experiencia, en, desde marzo cerró el teatro, cerraron Teatro Milán y el Foro Lucerna. Mm -hmm. eh, en todo este tiempo, es, eh, siendo teatros icónicos en la Ciudad de México, para eh, un espacio para mucho teatro clásico, teatro alternativo. ¿Cuál ha sido el principal reto al haber diseñado una obra, un espectáculo inmersivo, una experiencia inmersiva como Elena, Teatro Milán 1985, para traer de nuevo al público hacia el teatro? ¿Cuál fue el principal reto y qué fue, cuál fue la motivación para llevar a cabo este, este paso desde las artes escénicas en las cuales convergen la manera de hablarle al público, la manera como el recinto le habla al público y la manera como los actores se comunican también con el público. Esperamos pues, más, un segundo a que Joaquín pueda traducir la, la, la pregunta. Sin, ok. Since March, uh, Teatro Milán and Foro Lucerna closed uh, its doors these iconic theaters. So please tell us which is the principal challenge uh, when you design the show, Elena, this, in, this immersive uh, play and which was the motivation and in, which was the motivation for this show, this play and how the, how the actors and the, and the place itself talks to the audience. Primero que nada, gracias por la invitación, gracias al festival, gracias Francisco. Es un honor estar con ustedes, conocerles. Eh, me emociona muchísimo saber que estamos coincidiendo a nivel mundial en una situación que nos regala la oportunidad de ser lo más creativos posibles o poner nuestra creatividad al servicio. Y eso es el reto. Creo que eh, ha habido cosas sin duda muy, muy duras, tristes, que ha traído esta situación, pero lo que más atesoro es que nosotros que nos dedicamos a la creación, al a arte escénico, a comunicar, se nos ha puesto en el límite perfecto para dar eso, al, eh, poner eso al servicio. Y Teatro Milán 
Foro Lucerna están abiertos desde el 2014, programados de lunes a lunes, los dos recintos. Todos los días tenemos algún espectáculo, teatro, conciertos. Y el día que decidimos cerrar fue tres semanas antes de que se hiciera eh, oficial y lo decidimos hacer por, por, por corresponsabilidad. Yo no podía, eh, con la tensión de, de estar escuchando por parte de otras partes del mundo lo que estaba pasando y tener abierto el espacio sin saber realmente eh, la gravedad y, 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 y ser un una posible lugar en el que se contagiara más gente. Entonces decidimos cerrar justo antes de, de una semana antes íbamos a, perdón, una semana después de que cerramos íbamos a estrenar una trilogía trabajando como actores. Pablo Perroni, que es mi socio y codirector, y yo junto con otros cuatro actores. Y pues fue muy impactante tener que tomar la decisión y lo que decidimos después de pasar el proceso lógico de negar <ríe> rotundamente, eh, no pasar por el duelo de, de, de tener que cerrar, de, 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 no, de tener la incertidumbre de no saber cuándo podíamos abrir porque pensábamos que esto como un poco pasó con la influenza hace unos años, posiblemente íbamos a cerrar dos o tres semanas y, y, y tal, ¿no? Entonces, eh, ya que vivimos esto, lo que empezamos a, a desarrollar con Pepe Valdés, que de hecho eh, él estudió en Canadá, y dirección técnica, es nuestro director técnico desde que abrió el espacio, Sabíamos que una vez que pudiéramos reabrir, lógicamente no íbamos a poder hacerlo al 100% de capacidad y queríamos ofrecer algo en este espacio en el que pudiéramos abrir y no a capacidad completa, pero sí eh, ofrecer algo que es lo, de lo que se trata, Elena, que es eh, regresar la confianza de las personas hacia estar eh, en un venue, eh, obviamente poder generar ingresos para todo el equipo, el staff que tenemos dentro de los teatros y, y también tener un espacio, como siempre lo hemos tenido, activo para los colegas. Entonces, lo que se diseñó con Pepe, eh, él se puso a estudiar toda la manera en la que hacen los flujos en los parques de diversiones. Y cómo adaptar ese, ese mecanismo, digamos, a pues, contar una historia. El Teatro Milán y el Foro Lucerna normalmente están, como les decía, programados diario. Y entonces una, un recorrido inmersivo itinerante por el edificio en otra situación es imposible. No, no hay manera. Y, y toda la historia... Se, se comenzó a diseñar a partir primero de este dispositivo de flujo. ¿Cómo hacer que entre una cantidad de personas que nos permita operar, que sea económicamente posible, viable, sin tener, o teniendo, mejor dicho, la menor cantidad de personas reunidas en una misma eh, habitación? De entrada, descartar que, que el... Que el el espectáculo pudiera albergar a la gente sentado en, en butacas. Y lo que sucede con Elena es que son, las personas entran en máximo grupos de 10 personas, hacen un recorrido por siete distintas estaciones en el que hay escenas, ocurren escenas de 10 minutos, está el staff separado, los actores en cada estación máximo hay dos, y el grupo de 10 personas, eh, en algunos de los espacios escénicos tienen butacas, en algunos otros están de pie, y tienen el cubrebocas todo el tiempo. Mariana, perdón que te interrumpa. Dime. Este, ¿Puedo nada más hacer una pausa para hacer una traducción de lo que has dicho? ¡Ay, de... perdón! Pensé que estaba... <risa> No, no. Well, Por supuesto, claro I'll try, que sí. I'll, I'll try to make uh, a 
Francis was there. Sí. So first, first of all, she said, thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> she is very pleased to meet all of us in, to, in this panel and uh, to share a global uh, consternation and uh, for all that has been the, for all that all the things that we hope we all have been through that it is a it is a common scene it is a, a common damage that we have been uh, facing and uh, it has been uh, a duel first of all that she they had to close the theater before three weeks before they decided to close their theater even three three weeks uh, earlier that uh, than then it was uh, the lockdown was declared by the, the by the sanitary authorities because they decided that it was not uh, it was uh, could be responsible from them to keep it open for bringing people inside so they decided to close it three weeks in advance and um, uh, after that what became what came after that was a duel for making the, yourself the idea of uh, having the idea to 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 live with this new situation and to realize and to get used to this new situation. And after all, they began to do with Pepe Valdez, which is a producer and uh, um, and uh, director technical. Uh, direct, he's a uh, head of uh, technical director, and uh, <coughs> and also with her co-partner as uh, uh, she she decided to make this immersive show that was designed in the way that the people were getting into the uh, public spaces and with the safety measures that were taking to come in. It is, it is uh, well, the, the theater is programmed 365, both of the theaters, the spaces is programmed 365 days a year and they never stop. They keep working and working and they have concerts, they have plays, they have uh, all kinds of shows going in. And um, bringing or doing Elena was uh, thinking about how to get in touch again with the people and invite the people again to, to come by and to tell them that it, was, it is safe to come back to the theater to, in, a, in a show that is immersive that otherwise in other situations wouldn't be possible to do it. And of course, looking for having some kind of revenue in order to be able to pay all of the staff that was working and was held during all these months into the, in the theater. So, sorry, Mariana. So, está muy bien. <laughs> eh, voy a parar antes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She will stop. She will stop a little bit. She will make a short, short pauses. Y bueno, eh, llevamos cuatro semanas, seis semanas, seis semanas, cuatro, seis semanas de de, rea, de reapertura y Afortunadamente, eh, la respuesta ha sido muy favorable. Primero, porque somos muchas personas que, tanto actores, creativos y productores y, y público, que añorábamos regresar. It's so been three weeks. Been, Sorry. It's been, okay. We've been reopened for six weeks, and fortunately, it's been weeks. It, six weeks. Six. 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 Six weeks. And um, fortunately, uh, the, the answer of the audience has been favorable, uh, so good. Uh, sorry. Yes. Y um, vamos a, a continuar con la temporada tres semanas más. Ya, eh, ya había llegado a su fin. Se... se extendió la temporada porque la gente ha respondido muy bien y el teatro va a comenzar a tener algunas de las otras producciones que estaban ya programadas, eh, algunas de las a las que les es posible operar con, con el porcentaje que tenemos ahorita autorizado, que es el 30%. So we, we, we are going to continue three more weeks with the, with the play because as I said, we have had uh, an amazing answer of the audience and we are going to bring back some other plays that we had programmed with the, with the authorized uh, quantity of people, about the 30% of the audience. A mí lo que me parece muy, muy emocionante de esta época 
y, y de estar al frente de, de la programación y de la producción en estos espacios es el enfrentarnos a un momento en el que no hay reglas y eso nos permite lo que decía en un principio, ser lo más creativos que podemos ser y estar ofreciendo un espectáculo que, que nos regresa a, al teatro y que nos permite retomar nuestra actividad como creativos de teatro, pero también al público, de acercarse a una salud mental, me parece maravilloso. Estoy muy agradecida de con Pepe Valdés, repito, que es quien nos ayudó a diseñar el dispositivo, con el autor, el director, los, los actores, y, y sobre todo con el momento, con el poder eh, haber logrado recomponernos y utilizar nuestro, nuestro amor al teatro y, y ponerlo al servicio. So what I find exciting of this time and is that we have no rules and we have we can be creative and to bring back to go back to the theater. Uh, I'm really thankful with Pepe Valdez and the author of the play. So we are we are really happy to to achieve this. Thank you very much Mariana for sharing this experience with us. I would like to now go with Charlie, Charlie, Charlie Kosh. When everybody, everybody in the world was, uh, was going, was thinking how to deal with, uh, with the COVID-19, with the lockdowns. Nowadays, Madrid has, is again going through a lockdown. London is going through a lockdown again. How, uh, and uh, during, uh, during these months, of course, with the, uh, very low numbers of infections and um and uh and and deaths that you had in you've had in Queensland fortunately as as the CEO of the of the most important festival of the eastern coast of Australia and and what made you think what made you decide that uh, it was possible to go ahead with a live show festival as large as the Brisbane, Brisbane festival is, and uh, what was also your, your main fear about it? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. And thank you for having me on the panel. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I think you're, you're right. I mean, you made the point, Francisco, that we did have, we do have very fortunate case numbers here in Queensland. And I think that that's a, an important piece of context. Um, that uh, we, we've had six deaths in Queensland and, you know, just over a thousand cases, um, which are very low numbers compared to, you know, even the, the cities and countries around the panel that we have now. However, when um, the timeline of when we made these decisions, we were all in lockdown at that time. We were, we were creating a festival in this format through our laptops with an expectation that things were going to get worse. So we, We weren't, um, we were in a fortunate position comparatively, but we were still very much in a COVID lockdown environment when we were creating the festival. Um, and Mariana talked about the March being the date <clears throat> when your theatre closed. And I think March is a milestone for all of us that all of our plans that we had for beyond March all got thrown out of the window in that time. And so for us at the festival, we had a very formed international arts festival with theater from South America, dance from Shanghai, theater, you know, the kind of international arts festival that you would expect. And all of that got thrown away. The footage that you're seeing on the screen now, <laughs> we did these weekly rap videos. So this is from the end of week two. And you can see that, excuse me, we had, performance that happened and that some of this footage now is of um we broke our um program into types of performance that could be taken to the people and delivered safely um so the initial idea when we were in lockdown was how do we if we can't bring the people into our venues <coughs> excuse me how do we take the art to the people and 
while uh, in Rome we saw Italians singing opera to each other from their balconies, our artistic director, Louise Bettina, uh, so we don't have the balconies that they have in Rome, but we do have streets, we do have our parks, we do have our street corners. So how do we uh, take this opportunity to um, do what I believe festivals are capable of doing, which is um, adapt and be resilient, and, and festivals can be a very loose um the definition. So March, we took the whole festival that was planned, we threw it out the window. April, we realised that we couldn't rely on our box office income, we couldn't rely on our sponsorship, and we were probably going to get very low philanthropic giving. But fortunately, about 50% of our income comes from our government partners. And that's still a good uh, $6 million. And if we are uh, the ability to redistribute $6 million of very valuable money back into our industry in a way that theatres, ballet companies, orchestras cannot do, then we have an obligation to do that. So the drive in April was very much an obligation to our industry to say, how do we employ as many artists as possible and use this time of lockdown to commission as much new work as possible? And then how do we make sense of distributing that and performing it in September when our festival is on? And so we, the two main factors were an obligation to our industry to, to, to support them in a way that we felt no one else could. And if we did, then it was our responsibility to do so. And secondly, how to provide a beacon of hope and how to provide a gift to our city in a time when they would need it more than ever. And those two drivers were what led the artistic director and I to first try and convince our board, who then said, okay, maybe uh, you need to go and speak to the chief health officer, the state government person who's making decisions about borders being closed and everything else. So we sat and we explained what we we're trying to do. Some of our ideas were not allowed. Um, others, they said, no, you're on the right track if you can make sure it's safe. And then we had to write, we then became an administrative process of COVID plan writing. And we were writing our plans while other plans were being written alongside us. So theatres can now open in Brisbane. They have to have restricted numbers. There's certain rules about getting coming in and going. I see Mariana nodding. I'm sure she's very familiar with these practices as well as Valentini. Um, we, we had to, once those were written, those plans about reopening theatres were written, then we could start to look at, oh, maybe we'll put theatres back into our program. Well, there was a plan that was written around dance. If dancers follow a certain rule, they can rehearse, they can teach classes, they can perform on stages. Oh, great, well, let's put dance back in our program. So we were responding as plans were being written and opportunities opened up and as theatres reopened, we started adding more pieces into the program between May and July. And we really only added dance and theatre and circus into our program in July um, at the very last stage because they just opened up. Before that, it was a festival created for a lockdown environment. How do we have performances pop up on street corners so people in their houses can look out and see an orchestra or an opera singer in, in a park that they'd never expect to find them? We have beautiful public art by Dutch artist Florentine Hoffman, these beautiful birds that appeared across the city as a beacon of hope so people could look up and feel inspired. We had a laser artist from Melbourne in Victoria fly to Brisbane, quarantine in a hotel for two weeks, and then put lasers on 15 buildings and compose a really beautiful piece of electronic music that you could download through an app and listen while you looked at the lasers from wherever you were in the city. So very different festival to what we threw out the window in March, but an adaptable festival mm. that was driven by principles of we have to do this, it's our role, it's important. And fortunately, in a context where the city wasn't as sick as other cities are getting, and very fortunately, we didn't make the whole city sick by doing what we planned to do, which was a very big risk. Yeah, you know, what was I worried about? I was worried about we would be the cause of this thing. But we we had so much planning and so many processes in place um, that we we could do uh, proceed with a level of confidence that I didn't feel I was being irresponsible to my city in doing so. Okay, so let's say that that. Uh, the festival was reshaped and changing day by day. It was uh, reshaped, you know. Yeah, it, version 15, probably, you know, draft 15 probably made it to the, okay. this, this program.
<laughs> but it, uh, it, it, it's a quite a dense program too that ended up being much more filled. And I look back on it with a sense of pride. And again, my artistic director, Louise Pizzino, did an amazing job of actually having a festival that felt like it could be an international arts festival outside of COVID time. You know, it, it had a very a dense and it has merit and artistic integrity. It just was, it just, as you say, was reshaped and remade and adapted all the way through. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Charlie. We'll go back to that in the, yeah, in the, in the, in the next question. Valentin, I have, have a, a, a question. Uh, well, one of the things that uh, was uh, a landmark in this pandemic days was uh, we were talking about the Eugenio Ampudia piece that was put together in June, this uh, concert for the bio scene that was shot in, at the Liceo. Uh, it was uh, for all those who, who hasn't seen it, it was a concert uh, held by um, a string quartet with a piece, I believe it was Rossini's piece, a piece by Rossini, mm -hmm. a piece by Rossini, and uh, they played for more than 2,000 plants who were placed in one of each one of the seats of the Grand Liceo de Barcelona. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a statement of hope, definitely. Well, at least personally, it's how I'm taking it. Uh, it was a statement of hope how to, how to, uh, that how the performing arts had to survive and how they will, they will be survived, they will be able to survive. But uh, it was also a landmark of the institution. Is this a, as an, a specific narrative of the institution that will prevail for in the following, in, in the forthcoming years? Mm -hmm. and, uh, Gracias, Francisco. Uh, sí, desde luego esto tiene que ser una narrativa de, 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 del teatro de ópera. Eh, conjuntamente con Víctor García de Gomar, que es el director artístico, y Josep Pons, que es el director musical, estamos repensando lo que es un teatro de ópera. Eh, fijémonos que Macbeth de Verdi hablaba de la liberación de la mujer, eh, eh, las ruedas de Fígaro de Mozart eh, hablaba ya de la caída de la, de la aristocracia, Wagner eh, impulsa la relación entre el hombre y la ecología, cosa que ahora todavía se prevale. ¿Y dónde están los teatros de ópera hoy en día? Pensábamos que corremos el riesgo de estar alejados de la ciudadanía. Y cuando un teatro de ópera está alejado de la ciudadanía, corre el riesgo de desaparecer. En ese repensarlo, eh, planteamos, por ejemplo, el día que abrimos las puertas y no podíamos poner público, que cómo nos expresábamos. Ahí vino Juan Ampudia con la propuesta. Pues claro que los teatros hoy en día tienen que hablar de la ecología, de que la naturaleza tiene que estar en el centro de las políticas del ser humano. Claro que no, el, el, el teatro, pues eh, estamos hablando eh, con proyectos eh, educativos de las migraciones, del transhumanismo, del feminismo, um, de, de la diversidad. O hablamos de esto porque esto es el arte... O, o, o estamos un poco perdidos. Esta es la reflexión que, que hacemos. Al final, la ilustración, eh, desde la ilustración, se, se, se nos ha marcado mucho uh, um, hacer, uh, decir sí o decir no, um, prever aquello que es útil o no inútil. Uh, en cambio, justamente, uh, uh, el arte es lo que permite transformar a las personas. Y o somos nosotros que, desde el arte, lo ponemos en el centro de las políticas... O, o, o estamos perdidos y lo tenemos que hacer de manera atractiva y de manera que alcance a mucha gente y por tanto conectar lo que la gente eh, quiere con lo que nosotros hacemos para lograr transformarlo. O sea, adiós a la ilustración, vuelta al humanismo y vuelta a que los teatros de ópera sean útiles no solo para que estéticamente alucinemos, sino también para que seamos útiles a través del arte a la transformación de, 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 la, de la humanidad, que es lo que requerimos o, hoy en día. Siempre digo, el big, data, el big Data sin humanismo no es nada, son datos. Y el humanismo lo aporta el arte. Y desde ahí es donde estamos trabajando pues, desde nuestra parcela, desde la ópera. Pero también con una cosa muy egoísta, ¿eh? subsistir. Porque si no, fijaos, el MED ha cancelado toda una temporada que seguramente de aquí el año que viene pues abrirá con festejos. ¿eh? Pero la realidad es que la institución más importante del mundo ha cancelado y no hay manifestaciones en la calle. 
Y no me preocupa que cancele el MED, sino me preocupa cuán importante es para la sociedad la cultura. Y ahí, y ahí creo que tenemos que hacer un ejercicio de autocrítica para volver a estar en el centro de la gente, porque somos necesarios. Somos sí. necesarios. Gracias, so, Valentín. Joaquín. So, uh, we are representing an opera theater uh, where, where we share the, the relation between men and ecology, for example. And today, the opera theaters, we think that are in risk, we, we fear the risk that we are uh, far from the, from the people. So, uh, and when we fear the, the risk of disappearing. So the day we open the doors, uh, we, we are trying to, to, to save this. Um, so the, the, the art is what allows us to transform people And from the art, we try to put this, uh, this at the center of the politics or, or else we are lost. So we're trying to connect with the people and with this, we're trying to, to transform it. The theaters, the opera theaters are, are we, want, we want them to be useful uh, through the arts and through, through this, we want to transform humanity. So we can, we can see some examples like the Other, other theaters that has canceled and there are no, there are no manifestations on the streets. So, so the, the question is how important is the culture to society? And we're trying to do this exercise of auto-criticism. Gracias, Joaquin. Thank you. And um, adding a little bit more about uh, what Valeti said is that For example, the, the Metropolitan Opera has closed, New York has closed, and it will be closed until next year, but nobody, you don't see any riots on the street you know, from the people saying that it was closed or, or being angry or uh, protesting for the closing of the Metropolitan Opera. It will be reopened, but, uh, uh, we, have to, but uh, we have to get closer to the people every time as, as an opera theater. Yes, well, perhaps what I say is from illustration era, yeah. uh, we have been taught um, uh, that the things have to be or yes or no, or, 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 or even we have been taught that everything has to be useful, that we have lost, uh, though that is very, very important. Art gives us contradiction, uh, art gives us another point of view, and we, uh, our responsibility is to give to the citizens this point of view. And we are really far away nowadays from the citizens. Uh, the opera house, I, I mean, perhaps the theater is different because uh, with, with, the, with the dermaturgists can, can explain many things, but we, we, we have an obligation to, uh, to give this opportunity to, to the people to, 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 uh, to help us, to help them To, to have some contradictions and, 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 and what, what, I, what I told that I think is, is very important is after the art, what remains? After the art remains the human uh, transform. So we have to work in this, in this issue and this is what we have thought um, with the artistic director and the musical director. And one expression of that is the concert of Beyoncé that we could Uh, that we did last uh, last in June. Okay. Thank you very much, Valentin. And uh, now we're going to move on. We were in in a previous talk. We were talking that you were talking that about one very in, uh, interesting thing that was uh, that uh, in this case in this pandemic we would not only we had to become not only a producers, but we had to learn how to become also a TV producer. And uh, you had to be both. You have to, you have to, to, to <clears throat> dominate. Learn a new job. You, had, you have a new job <laughs> with, the, with the very same page, the, the very same pay, and, and uh, they are not going to pay you anything else for that. But that you had to deal with certain things that when being a 
producer you didn't have in mind, but it had just in Charlie's case, you had to reshape the festival, the jazz international, the, the, the jazz festival for, for doing so. And the costs were in some cases were the same and in some cases were even higher. Yeah. What was part of this experience during the festival in Montreal? So I'd like to start by saying that I've, I've just heard very inspiring people just uh, before me. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy to be here and I would love to be in Guanajuato next year. <laughs> it would be better, you know? Yes. Very, like, the digital world is not exactly for me. And my computer just told me that there's no more battery. So I have to go and run and pick up the wire so that we stay all together. Can you give me one minute? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> timing, timing, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> it will happen. Well, um, in the case of uh, uh, Valentin, it's very, it's very interesting what you were saying about this. Uh, you were talking about one thing that I have a question for, for all of you later on, which is that you were talking about the big data. Big data is also one of the things that we have to deal with with today, but without humanity behind, it is absolutely useless. And, uh, and uh, very, a very selfish thing that you were saying is that we, had, we have to think about art, how to, art will transform us, how to, art will make us uh, to clash with each other. But uh, uh, selfishly, we have to, to, to make money out of it, <laughs> to, think of, to make money out of it. So we'll talk about it a little bit later. Thank you, Mohan. Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, we 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 went through the the, the same uh, the same process as everyone here. Uh, we've learned uh, in March. I mean, we've decided in March that we couldn't have the uh, a real festival, and it feels like a decade ago already, which is crazy, uh, and. Yeah, we had to think about doing something nonetheless. And, uh, you know, we decided to take that uh, digital route, uh, like many of us, uh, to present, you know, what we do to give uh, uh, this impression of what is the jazz festival that we do every year, uh, which is, you know, quite a big festival. We, we're doing like, something around 400 shows uh, over 10 days. And it's, it's a mix of, you know, um, of local, uh, local artists and, you know, artists from, uh, from, uh, from everywhere, from Canada and all over the world. Uh, it's a jazz festival. So we're trying to have like at least 50% of, you know, jazz during our festival. You know, it's like the, the minimum for us. Uh, and the thing is that this is like a, a free festival uh, which happens downtown Montreal. So anybody, anybody can uh, attend the festival. Uh, you don't need to, to have money to come and participate to the, to the, to the festival. And it's been like that for uh, forever, uh, which is a little bit more than 40 years. Um, so yeah, we, we, when we had to cancel, we thought about that, uh, digital festival and, you know, with, with a few objectives, which was, you know, so like I just said, give like a, a, a taste of what is the festival, uh, bring some work to, to our people as well. And when I say people, it's, uh, the people who work with us at, uh, in the company, but it's also, you know, all the, uh, the, the artists and the people around, obviously, uh, you know, all the tours and like concerts and everything that got canceled was uh, something very bad for the uh, for the uh, the cultural uh, economy here and especially for the artists. And the artists, you know, they always have people around them which are their you know their musicians in our case. Uh, the, the sound guys, the, you know, the light guys, all those people that couldn't be working because there were no, no shows, no tours, no nothing. So when you're like a, a singer, you can get, you know, some, some uh, royalties and, you know, stuff like that. But 
when you're like a, an artisan, you know, uh, not, not the artist, but the, the people around you don't get the money. So that was very important for us to, 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 to bring something to them. Uh, and, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we, we saw all those people uh, doing live shows uh, with their iPhones on Skype, on Zoom and everything. And, you know, it's, we, we were having the music, but not necessarily the quality uh, in terms of sound and image. So that was one of our main uh, objectives. If we have to go, uh, if we have to do something, it needs to be absolutely perfect. So, yeah, and um, yeah, so that's, that's what we, we had in mind doing that. So we, we, we started booking the, the artist and, you know, preparing the space, uh, getting like a huge security else uh, security plan and you know, respecting all the rules and getting the, you know, the approvals from governments and CV and everything to be able to do it. And then, you know, we, we, we discovered that doing so is like kind of a new job because we were halfway between uh, a show promoter as the jazz festival and a TV producer. <laughs> and where, when you're a TV producer, you know, there's a few stuff that, that are different, you know, the, 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 the people you're talking to, but all the thing about the rights uh, of music was like a nightmare, you know? And it's, it's funny because that was a nightmare for everyone, even for the, uh, uh, I, I think that many of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, um, the companies who collect the money, you know, the, all the rights, like the mechanical rights and everything, you know, they, they had to think about, okay, we're in a new space now and everything is not different and everybody is doing, are doing shows, mm -hmm. festivals are doing so, venues are doing so. And, you know, they were realizing that the money was not going to uh, what is called SOCAN here or mm -hmm. to any publisher, you know, that represented the, the rights for the music that was uh, being played. So it, it was like a, a big uh, learning uh, process. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the, the whole festival was, I, I think, kind of um, a big uh, rehearsal for, uh, for the years to come. Uh, because I think like digital music is here to stay and uh, not, I mean, digital uh, concert is here to stay for the, for the next years. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, 2020 was like a, a real uh, harsh uh, rehearsal thing, I think. The, the, real re the rehearsal thing. So yeah. Yeah, just uh, uh, in, a, in a very fast way, do you think this uh, new ways of programming will reshape also the way that you would program. You will think about an, a digital audience for the 2021 edition. I mean, what, one of the, uh, of the most inter uh, interesting thing uh, in what we've experienced during the festival is that we've realized that many people from around the world knew about the jazz festival mm -hmm. and they were all together behind their screens and, you know, typing some nice comments on the festival that was, you know, when you're in your festival, you just, you just get the bad messages like, okay, someone is complaining because this is not working, yeah. this is late, this is blah, blah. And then you're here and you just see all this amazing comment and, and that was great. And the other thing is that uh, obviously the, 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 the programming was super local and that was like hundred person local only people living near Montreal or in Quebec. Uh, and I mean, people from New Zealand was checking uh, someone like Jean-Michel Blé or Dominique Fizeme or, you know, those people, those, our, our people, those artists that we support every year and that we're super proud to see going to other festivals in the world. So people could see them and discover them through us. So, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah. So for me, uh, when I'm talking about uh, a digital form of what we do uh, to stay in the in the years to come is it's for me it's going to be a good way for us to support our local artists to be seen elsewhere and that's that's something that we 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 have to do and it's it's quite easy to do so yeah okay 
Thank you, Laurent. Uh, uh, I would like now to, to go through uh, a general question to, to the, four of, the four of you. Now, the, uh, going back to, the, to what Valentin was saying a few, a few minutes ago, is uh, uh, dealing with big data. The computer nowadays has become the new venue. The seat has become the chair at your living room. And uh, uh, instead of going through the bar, you can have your wine in front of you and uh, you have become a passive, a little, let's say, a passive uh, kind of, of concert goer. But uh, it leads us definitely to, to deal with uh, becoming digital in, in, in involves being a factor of, of uh, of being in being on the need to read different data that we are perhaps not very used to do or not in the performing arts. We are very used to to know the data about how many how many tickets we've sold or how many views we've seen during during um, how many views a, a live uh, show has on, on on YouTube or or a clip or how many uh, retweets we have of a post that we do it on Twitter. That's all the basic data. How would you, for the four of you, think that this dealing with this new data, apart for as as Moran has said, that you have to become also a television, a television producer, okay. not only a producer but a television producer, and deal with mechanical rights, something that some things that we didn't have in mind before. A part of that, we will have to think about this uh, new data. Will this new data will reshape or will be part of thinking of this new program in the forthcoming years in all of your venues, for example, Mariana and Valentin or the festival? Charlie, Don, Moran, I would like to start with, uh, in this case, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, we, we made a very firm decision not to to, to do the virtual theatre, um, virtual festival, because uh, it was the direction of our artistic director at the time. So I think, um, you know, listening to Maureen then talk about um, music rights and a new language that we had to learn, I think all of us had, I mean, my new language was COVID planning. You know, I, I now speak a language I, I, di I didn't know in March. And um, I think that, <laughs> It, it is not one that I chose to learn, but now I, I probably know more about it than, than many others because of what we've gone through. So whereas I understand the question and, and it, I think going forward, it, how we adapt and how we find our ways to perform. And, and for many, it is virtually um, through online services and streaming platforms. Um, I feel fortunate that we found a way to deliver live performance. And for us, we'll continue to lean into that um, but in doing so, I acknowledge all of us have had to, whether it's working through rights of music through, um, through Maureen's experience or what Mariana would have had to have gone through to, um, to reopen her venue and, and perform the site-specific work, or as Valentin spoke about before, you know, the performance and what was very popular and seen around the world with the, the performance to plans. It, you know, they, these are all... These are all, um, there's, a, there's learnings that we've all had to go through and how we adapt. But I think for us as an industry, we are the kind of people who get the show on. And I think for us, um, there's a certain resilience in our performing arts industry that um, the people you want at your side are the people who get the show on no matter what. And I think as an industry, we'll continue to learn and adapt and overcome those challenges and deconstruct broadcasting rights when we don't know how to do that because the show needs to go on so i think there's kind of a hunger and adaptability and flexibility of our industry that will, will see us through but um the data question i'm probably not not the best person to pick up that one but i i, I think there's um there's a there's a meta narrative to, to that response which is we're, we're all in no one no one knows no one, no one is an expert in what we've all just um, achieved over the last six months and will continue to be resilient and adapt, but, but luckily we're hungry like that, so, yeah. Thank you very much, Ali. Mariana? Coincido muchísimo en todo lo que dijo Charlie. Eh, y lo mencioné en un principio. Creo que lo más hermoso de, de esta 
insisto siempre en buscar lo hermoso de entrada. Y, y me parece una gran oportunidad para, para utilizar todos nuestros recursos creativos, eh, toda nuestra... Algo que hace mucha falta que es empatía y transformarla en algo que pueda llegar a las personas a través del I, arte que cada uno de nosotros hacemos. I agree with Charlie. I mentioned before the most beautiful I think is a great opportunity to use our creative resources uh, to be empathic and, and to transform this in something that we can share with the people. Y pues exactamente, no no estamos ante algo que tenemos que construir por día. Y, y también coincido con Valentí en, en insistir en poner sobre la mesa por qué eh, nuestra industria no es una cosa de primera importancia para el mundo entero, porque al escuchar que está pasando también eso ahí, que pasa mucho en México y que es con lo que yo me topo todos los días desde que reabrimos los teatros en 2014 y que he estado al frente de, de la programación, pues se hace mayor nuestra labor, nuestra tarea, eh, poner en, en primer lugar de necesidad por el aporte que crea el, lo que nosotros hacemos, la industria, el arte, la ópera, el teatro, el, la música. So, eh, exactly. Uh... We are, we are trying to construct, to reconstruct it day, day by day. And I agree with Valenti on insisting on putting on the table uh, why our industry is not a first necessity thing because to hear it happens all over the world. And, and, I, and, I, and I find this every day since we opened our theaters on 2014. That's our biggest job to, to put on first place, what arts, music uh, brings to, to the society. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias, Joaquín. Valdi. Francisco, I, I completely agree uh, what you said before. I mean, the screen uh, becomes another venue. But I think that will be another, another venue in a different way that we understand nowadays. I mean, uh, first of all, The screen is an opportunity, but also can show our um, our our abilities. I mean, uh, because the uh, the screen um, we can show what we do on our stage, but this gives us a big scalability. So this is a big point. So we can show uh, what we do to the whole world, but this means that we have to be absolutely demanding what we performing. So our quality have to be excellent. Uh, our, uh, our singers have to be excellent because we show what we do to the whole world. So this gives us an opportunity uh, because it's a way to uh, give an, a scale to our business. And, and so, wow, we have, an, uh, we have a business with a scalability. So um, the, this is uh, 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 all what we wish actually. But uh, where, um, when I said that I think that we, uh, this will be in a different way is because uh, we, we cannot uh, only show mm, the performer, the, the perform. We have to add value. We have to um, create uh, a community a community of, of attendance, a new community of attendance. So we not only show uh, the, the show, uh, we, perhaps will be um, some specialists about the opera uh, that will keep in touch with the rest of attendance, explaining what is happening to the opera. Um, we will uh, have to a uh, platform where uh, the audience um, can get in touch with the other ones from Sydney to Los Angeles or from Barcelona to Madrid. So we have to rethink the way that we show uh, our, our performance uh, to the world through the screen. So 
I think that uh, the way to show uh, an opera uh, how we understand nowadays is almost over if we want that this opportunity of scalability um, have, uh, have success. So Thank here you, is opportunity, opportunity of big data, opportunity to, uh, uh, to uh, take data from, from the world and then opportunity to, to get a sponsorship, not only from our city, uh, uh, otherwise from other, uh, other countries. So if we do that correctly, and if we are the first, and, and if we don't do mistakes, this can become uh, uh, um, uh, an, an absolutely opportunity. But if we fail, perhaps uh, we don't. We won't have a second choice to do it mm, well. Yeah, that's very that's very right. If 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 I mean, if you try it, it's fine trying. But uh, if you do it fine, you have to do it. Uh, just uh, as a, I think there is a coincidence in in in, in all senses in all of us that if we if we have to try but if we try it we have to do it right exactly. otherwise if we fail nobody will will ever see us again and uh, perhaps content is is king now mom we'll, we'll last with with you this with this uh, last question do you think uh dealing dealing with this big data and performing and the since the computer has become the new venue and the seats are, are a part are, are in a different way in, in, a, in a different part of the of, of the venue uh, do you have yeah. to will, will the will the decisions of programming a festival uh, will be also taken by considering this new big data that this information that the data is giving you I mean there's probably many things I want to say right now uh, you know uh, Valenti was talking about uh, we have one chance to, you know, to show something and to interact with the people from everywhere and find new ways and everything. Then I think that maybe we're going to to all get competitors at some point because, you know, if the people are buying a ticket uh, to see a, a, a digital show in your uh, opera house in Barcelona, where would they do it for my opera in Montreal? Uh, so you know, it's. It, it becomes like a giant uh, village where you can access anything. Um, so that, that, that's one thing about what was said before. Uh, in terms of, you know, data, I feel, you know, we, for me, it's like, it's, it, it's to see uh, business not being a culture or art or culture not being business. And, uh, I feel that uh, Charlie and Mariana are doing uh, stuff because there's there's like uh, something very important, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the artistic object. Mm -hmm. I do, you know, I'm more on the business side of it, I'd say, where I need data every day. If I book someone, I've checked, I've probably checked where this guy is. Uh, on Spotify, on uh, Apple, on Instagram, on Facebook, on everything. And if he's not at the place, you know, uh, at a good place, I'm going to think about it. And you know, obviously, I'm not going. I'm not going to not book someone because he just has like a, a few hundred people on his Instagram. I don't care. You know, I have many different slots where I can do stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's like a concern we have all the time when, when we are building the, the programming of the festival. But then, you know, if you're doing some digital stuff and eh, you have the numbers, it doesn't lie. You know, if one artist play your festival and there was like a digital show and there was, I don't know, like 200 people behind their screens checking the, the show, but then maybe the sponsor is not going to be interested in the interested in, in helping us the, the, the year after because, you know, data are not good enough for them. So, you know, it's, numbers are everywhere. We can access them, it's so easy and we need to work with them, but at the same time, we need to put them in, in, uh, in perspective as well. And, yes. you know, it's the, the, the business we're using to do all those digital stuff, which is uh, YouTube and, 
mainly Facebook and we had a conversation in the front Francisco. It's, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever uh, did that, you know, post something with uh, a personal account and uh, post the same thing with like a, a pro account. And if you don't push the pro account with, you know, paying advertising, the advertising, your personal account is probably going to to have more clicks than the uh, the the than the uh, than the corporate uh, one. Well, yeah, because that's how it works. You need to pay to get uh, to, to 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 be able to be seen by other people, and I think it's very unfortunate. I mean, you know, that works for a smaller scale. Uh, Thanks, and I'm not talking about Ariana Grande or that kind of people because obviously, when I post something, it's going to get huge necessarily. But you know, it's like all the algorithm that brings the people to see it because Facebook and all they know that you know it brings click and it's interesting for them as well. So yeah, it's it's a tough world where there's good things and uh, bad things. <laughs> At the end, there's nothing like, like like life experience, obviously, because in our, our in our in our budget also the 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 the, the main incomes comes from life experience, but also this also demand demand us to do it in excellent uh, in our venue. So uh, so we have to work hard in order to give a good experience to our audience to explain that there's nothing like life experience. Uh, and okay. and try that they come again and again. Uh, so uh, everything helps uh, to give better experience in, in front of your screen or, 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 or in live experience. But surely but, we, we can do we, exactly exactly because people have to meet each other actually because we are human and we need that no and we need that to feel what, what, what is in front of the, uh, the the stage. But at the end. Uh, platform digital platforms exist, and we cannot um, give um, behind behind them. Actually, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, and uh, well, it's uh, it's been very interesting all, all what you've been saying. And um, exactly one of the things I I want to put in context is that Morana, when we had this telephone conversation, we were talking about that. It's sometimes it's much easier to get a, a wider uh, uh, reach of an audience from a personal account than than from an institutional account. That sometimes those institutional accounts are by I, perhaps by Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook are submit uh, are um, uh, are very very closely observed. And either you pay for a, for an advertisement, very few money, but you have to pay in order to get to a, a wider audience. Even if you, it doesn't really matter if you have a million followers or two million followers, but if you have, uh, I don't know, perhaps 10,000 followers in your personal account, you will reach much more people than, than, than from the other one. And you are certainly will not reach, it's something happening with the algorithm that you will not reach the proper people that you think you will in order to make, not only for selling tickets, but letting the people know what is going on and, uh, and uh, sometimes you have to deal with that. It's a very strange world that it's a part of the data we have to deal with. And uh, according to, to, to the, uh, all the things that we have to do, there is nothing like the live experience. Nothing will ever, ever supply, ever uh, uh, replace, not supply, replace the live experience, not the digital. But uh, just to, to wrap everything up, the wrapping up, it's like I have, a few, a few things to 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 talk about is that there is nothing like like the live experience, but the digital has come just to stay. So I think the digital, perhaps the digital, was something that we had aside, and uh, we didn't take care about very much, but we suddenly found out that it was something that we had in at hand and saved us. To keep on producing things, and uh, during this this uh, lockdowns and the, this pandemic days, there is a, a big resilience, and uh, in the industry, a sense of resilience that uh, keeps us together, keeps us talking about all these things, to keep us 
working and uh, and seeing and looking the ways how to to make things, not how to to kneel down instead of in, in, instead of of, of uh, crossing our arms and doing nothing. And uh, we have to do things better. It, it, it is demanding us. These new languages are demanding us to be better than we were, because if we had a if we had a show where, for example, at, uh, you had a, 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 a small show, perhaps uh, at uh, a 500 seats venue like Lunario, which is which is the small the small venue at Auditorio Nacional, but if we are bringing it to a global audience, we have to do it fine. Otherwise, we will never, instead of that, as an institution, if we do it wrong, then we are perhaps crucifying the artists that will be performing there. And we, did, we don't know about that. I think those are the, the, the and uh, dealing in the case of, of also, Mar also Mariana, dealing with uh, producing and reopening a theater from none, from zero, and building a new expectation, a new experience for going and giving back the audience the confidence of going back to those theaters is something that we have to deal with. And uh, I don't know, uh, but that, I think that's part of the, of the things. And of course, that uh, this, uh, we have to, to, to think about that not programming. The, program, the programming has to be, the big numbers have to be taken, have to be seen but not, not have, well, don't have to bias the, the, our common sense of programming. There's, uh, we, we have to take care uh, about that. And uh, last but not least, if, something, if, if there's something I'm missing, please let, let me know. And um, before going into, into a Q&A session, uh, how do uh, we have to, the obligation to give hope and, uh, uh, let's. Uh, we have to say goodbye to the illustration, the illustrator, and uh, to welcome and embrace this new, uh, new this uh, new intentions, or new senses, and new feelings, and new ways of communicating that these these new formats are giving us. Uh, I think that's is it. Um, did I made it fine? <laughs> <laughs> See. Charlie, you're, 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 you're falling asleep. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. No, no, I, I think that's a really great summary, Francisco. I think one point that I just would like to pick up on is something that Marin mentioned about um, programming locally and uh, what happened uh, when with the Montreal Festival and, and putting uh, Montreal artists on stages. And that was something that we found as well was that... Um, we, you know, we had some, we're, we're normally an international arts festival. We bring the best of the world to our hometown and we share that with our city. <clears throat> this year, we had some elements of international. We had the Florentine Hoffman um, public art. His work was designed in, in Amsterdam, manufactured in Melbourne, flown to Brisbane and installed. So there were some elements of international um, flavors within our festival. I think it's important that as an international festival, we have international ways and how we do that going forward will be interesting. And, you know, through digital platforms or through um, collaborations or mentorships or uh, different ways to do that. So we're still reaching out. But what we found was we programmed locally. We had a thousand artists and the majority of those were from Queensland with apart from a few that I mentioned, we either quarantined or, um, or, or came to us via digital platforms. But most of those were Queensland artists and they didn't let us down. The quality was very, very high. And I think there's something in this from a global perspective, and I think we see it in other industries, what happens when you invest in your local economy and what are the benefits that come from that? And... Um, what we discovered this year was how um, refreshing it was to have such a high quality of artistic product on our stages and how proud it was, was when it was local. And that meant that our industry here was very proud and grateful of the festival in a way that we haven't connected with them in a very long time. Our audiences were very happy because the product was strong. And we actually found that we had a better response here 
within the industry, but also on the outside of the industry, um, within politics and um, our board and, and, and audiences who really appreciated that. And I think, you know, part of the provocation, Francisco, you gave us is going forward, what are the learnings from this time? And I think what happens when you invest locally and what happens when you allow that to, to be of such a high quality um, and, and, and finding that balance. And I think that was a really interesting point that Maureen made and it's been our learning from, from this year. So I thought I'd just share that. Okay, yeah, damn, that's true. So that's one of the biggest learnings of this. And that will be definitely one of the things that we have to keep in mind that, uh, for the next year and the forthcoming years. So, so strengthen and supporting the local talent and the local artists, and uh, perhaps try, in trying to become international, sometimes we forget the local numbers of the local yeah. artists. Yeah. Uh, so then, thank you very much, uh, Charlie, for that, for, for the observation. And uh, I don't know if someone else has something else to say. Si alguien tiene algo más que decir, o pasamos a la a la sesión de preguntas y respuestas, or we go to through the Q and A question, Q and A session. Okay, so pasaremos, we go to the, through the Q&A. Um, there is uh, Arturo Pascal, could you, uh, it's whoever wants to answer to this question, for example, could you give us an example of whom do you think is making a great job breaking paradigms in the pandemic in the performing arts sector? It could be an artist or a festival or a government policy. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's too early uh, to, to think about because I think that nowadays, uh, under my point of view, all, all the governments are thinking about how to reduce the pandemic uh, issue. And so in, ter in cultural terms, I think that is uh, still early to, to now policy policize in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, of new ways of understanding culture, I think. Nowadays, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, uh, um, from my end, um, I mean, these aren't necessarily uh, names of artists that, that will be familiar to, to the audience or to the panel, but what we found was um, as opportunities arise to perform again, the, the plans have to change. And so we had some companies who were expected to one show, that wasn't possible, but they adapted in looking at different ways to perform. So for example, there's a local company here called Polytoxic. They took their theater show, threw it out the window. They ended up doing a piece where they uh, were, did like a time capsule. They interviewed many people from across the local arts industry. They then uh, made a beautiful video art piece that then blended some of that, turned it into a projection piece and projected it onto the wall of the powerhouse theatre, which is an old industrial, used to be an industrial brick, um, you know, electrical station, and is now a theatre, beautiful brick building. And they projected onto the front, and then they had circus performers on um, on ropes, kind of doing up and down the wall. So they kind of had this live art piece that then the audience were, it was free to the public, but the audience had to stand four meters apart and, you know, COVID, COVID, COVID. But it was a piece that engaged the entire industry. It was a beautiful spectacle piece. It had live performance, video projection, et cetera. And, and they made it in three months because they, that was the opportunity. We presented them and they did it. Another company did the same thing. They had a theater show, they threw it out and they did a piece um, Similar, I don't know the work that Mariana is talking about, but it was a live art piece and, and it wasn't a theatre show, but it had audiences. Um, if you turned up with your partner, you got separated, you sat at a table and you met a stranger, you were given a bottle of wine and you had to answer questions that were predetermined. There was performance in and around it. There was musical, it was a promenade piece as well, but they adapted and remade it based on what were the rules. And I think you know, again, I acknowledge the fortunate position we are here, but not everyone in Australia has done what we've done in the last month or so um, uh, because they haven't lent as heavily into what's possible. And if there's a crack, the doors open this much, we're just leaning into it to see what's how far we can get it open without breaking the rules. And that's what a lot of our artists did. 
what can we do? Then how do we break that open and explore the potential within that, you know, still reduced um, parameters, but gosh, we can fill it with something beautiful, even if it's reduced. And I think that's the more we have to do is lean as heavily into what's possible and then fill it with art. <laughs> and that's yeah. that's what I found our companies, you know, these are local companies, Polytoxic, Circa, Contemporary Circus, where I used to work, The Good Room, um, you know, great local companies who adapted. We had percussionists on the roof of reservoirs overlooking the city because um, they're industrial concrete slabs, but they have views of the city. So you put a, a tam-tam up there, a gong, and have a percussionist play it, and it's the most beautiful experience you'll ever have. But whenever would you find yourself on a reservoir roof with a view of the city, listening to one percussion piece for a half hour set, you know, this was, this was all created because the door opened that much and we just lean as heavily into it. And I think right. artists will do that, you know? So we never, never underestimate every opportunity that is yeah. you have in front of you. Tenemos una pregunta para Mariana. We have a question for Mariana. Lo que la pandemia nos ha, nos ha mostrado es que el público está listo para el entorno digital. Obviamente el uso del celular nos ha aclimatado a este, pero ¿qué tanto están los artistas dispuestos y capacitados a sumergirse en ese mundo y a reaprender y a adaptar su creación a las posibilidades de la tecnología, convivir en el futuro entre la fisicalidad y la virtualidad? Pues sí. So, uh, let me could you uh -huh. let me translate? There's a question for Mariana. Is the pandemic has uh, taught us that the audience is ready for for the digital um, uh, environment? Obviously, the use of a cell phone has uh, has uh, been part of it. But uh, how um, are the artists willing to do? And uh, are are they capable to submerge themselves in this kind of in this kind in this world? and to relearn, uh, reshape, and readapt their creative process to the possibilities that technology is giving them and to, um, uh, and to live uh, in the future with this uh, duality between physically, uh, physicality, phys physical world and virtual world. Es algo que lo, se mencionó ya, ¿no? O sea, hemos tenido que Aprender a hacer ahora ese lenguaje. Como artistas. Hay varias, sí, hay varias producciones que se están eh, transmitiendo en vivo, otras que se están grabando para poder, justamente, que eso es lo que estamos haciendo desde el Teatro Milán. Eh, vamos a comenzar a hacer transmisiones de obras, pero sí apoyándonos en equipos que hacen televisión para crear este nuevo lenguaje de no traicionar a, 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 al, que es un espectáculo teatral, el lenguaje teatral, la, lo que es la dramaturgia y etcétera, pero sí transformarla para que sea en términos de calidad mucho mayor y mucho más interesante de ver. Si so. quieres, it has been told uh, we are we are learning this language there are a lot of productions that are broad, broadcasting live others that are broadcasting recorded uh, material and so we in our theater we are going to to do this we're going to broadcast uh, some plays but we are trying to or, or we are uh, supporting ourselves on television uh, teams to not betray the the, the the theater the theater show and the and the dramaturgy but yes uh, we are trying to to bring the the most quality and and to transform it for this eh, dentro de premios metropolitanos de teatro eh, se abrió una categoría para para reconocer y premiar a todo el material que esté generándose en el país a nivel virtual. Joaquín, si quieres. Sí, yes, um, uh, at the Metro Awards, Metropolitan Awards, there is a new category to recognize this, this, this kind of new material. Y 
eh, por ejemplo, la, la temporada que nosotros estamos haciendo presencial con este eh, dispositivo de, de no mayor, grupos de no mayor de 10 personas, también tienen un material que, que es un eh, documental eh, que está en YouTube disponible y que muestra cómo es que se creó, cómo es que funciona y la idea es eso, replantearnos todos los que amamos el arte en vivo y que no vamos a dejar de hacerlo, eh, cómo sí adaptarnos a esta nueva forma de llevar eh, nuestros contenidos y aprovechar que es esta gran oportunidad de que se pueda ver a nivel mundial, que creo que esa es una, una muy buena ventaja para todos, el poder compartir lo que hacemos localmente eh, en nuestros teatros, ahora hacerlo, utilizar las plataformas para poder exponerlo en todo el planeta. And for example, this season that we are doing with this, with this where we only have 10, 10 people uh, in the theater, this material also has a documentary that you can watch on YouTube and it shows how it was created and how it works And the idea is to, to, to bring again the, the live art uh, and how we adapt to, to this new form and how we, we bring our new content and to take advantage of this huge opportunity. Uh, so, the, so the world can see our work. It's an advantage that we can share what we do locally in our theaters. And we, we, we use this plat these platforms to expose it. Gracias. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, from around there is a question. Do you see more international cooperation now that we all need to survive and come back? Can you, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Do you see more international cooperation now that we all need to survive in this comeback? Um, I don't know. Like more, more company being here for uh, for as as uh, uh, partners of uh, festivals. Well, uh, yeah, perhaps. Or you have more. Uh, I mean, have, have the connections, international connections, uh, have grown during this pandemic days. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but you know, I I, I don't work for uh, in in the partnership department. I'm really focusing on the uh, on the uh, booking department. But I, I feel that we're still very uh, Canadian uh, in our uh, partnerships. Uh, but you know, I think that other than you know, partnership like business that brings money in. Uh, I think we're talking a lot to, uh, to many, many different organizations in the world, uh, like other festivals. And it's, you know, it, it, there's a lot of uh, conversations with, uh, and for, for me, for instance, like many uh, different jazz festivals, uh, festivals in Canada to see what we can do all together to, uh, to do stuff better and, you know, find ideas in case this pandemic keeps on. Uh, so it, it, it's a good time to, uh, uh, yeah, the, the crisis brought that, you know, the, the, uh, the gathering between people were, you know, um, looking for other people to talk to about where they're living as, you know, as a business or as a human being. So yeah, yes and no. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, we have uh, many, many more questions from the audience here, but I think uh, we are running out of time. I would really like to, to, to thank all of our guests today. I think we've been here for an hour and a half with a very interesting approaches to the performing arts and the new languages that we've been through, through the, uh, in, 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 this, in these months. And, specifically what will prevail for the next years, the following years, that it's, uh, it's an everyday learning process, I think. And uh, 
we we have to learn also to deal with ourselves to um, to think differently and uh, to think uh, uh, in a different way not uh, not only by not only thinking in a digital way not only thinking in a physical way but uh, trying to get everything together along with also with with uh, uh, with all the feed, feedback that we have either from the artists and our audiences all around and our global audiences all around the world so uh, sometimes we were we we feel in clustered and we can't see beyond our four walls where we are and uh, I think this situation has forced us to to think why don't to think out of the box definitely <laughs> but I, I, I don't see uh, the g- digital world uh, uh, be a good thing for uh, for the uh, the health of uh, artists around and I think that more than us they need people in front of them to, uh, to vibe to, 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 to feel the vibrations and uh, my, my, my wife is a performer she's a singer and she was proposed to do like shows with like just a 250 people capacity and she was like no I don't want to do it because I'm not going to deliver what I'm supposed to deliver mm-hmm. in front of like a full house where it's hot, where it smells beer and sweat and all that, you know, nothing is going to be able to replace that. And the artists feel that, I think that the artist needs this, this atmosphere to be, uh, to be able to do something. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's part of the rush that you need as an artist to, to know exactly what you deal with. Being on stage is, uh, uh, not something Mariana really knows about. Uh, being on stage in front of a very large audience is uh, uh, sweating and uh, not try, trying to see well, who is in front of you, but definitely the lights will never let you see the faces. But uh, the live experience, either for the audience and for the artist, will definitely be uh, replaced. They, they don't know what to say between songs, you know? It's like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, okay, let's keep on. Okay, thanks. Bye. They were they waiting for the applause. Yeah. And the only people the only people who give you the applause are, are the staff around. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, okay. I don't know if someone of you have anything else to say or to add to this very really wonderful, interesting panel. Invite us in Mexico next year. Yes. Yeah, we'd love to come to Salvatino <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, we will be delighted to see you at the Festival Cervantino, which is a, uh, it will be a three-week wonderful experience next year, and in two years it will be it's turning fifty, so uh, it, it's going to be a huge party in two years. Uh, Mariana is not she she really had to, as she said, she had to go. Um, because she's running a festival nowadays so mm-hmm. but uh, <laughs> very much well thank you very much to all of you mariana yes. muchísimas gracias. gracias juan gracias merci Todo un placer. Este, um, uh, valentí gracias de verdad charlie thank you very much charlie uh, uh, thank you thank you for this it's almost good night charlie Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. morning. Oh, it's morning time now. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't really want to, to but, but uh, one of the things that happens during these transmissions and during this meeting is that you pour the coffee on your notes. Oh, oh, well <laughs> you, you, you handled it very tactfully, Francisco. No one knew. You didn't break, you didn't break a sweat. Well done. No, I wish it had been whiskey. Unfortunately, it was not. Uh, but it was not. <laughs> That's a waste of whiskey right there. <laughs> but uh, muchísimas gracias a todos. De gracias. Thank, Thank you very much. Time. On behalf of the Festival Internacional Cervantino, a nombre del Festival Internacional Cervantino, y, and uh, the Auditorio Nacional in Mexico City, I, I'm, I'm really pleased and I'm really honored to have been uh, the moderator of this panel and to know all the aspects that are 
of all the people that are going around around this this uh, this this world where we are more connected every day. Thank you, thank you very much. Ah, recordamos, uh, we, uh, recordamos a toda la gente que nos está viendo que la, la retransmisión eh, mm. subtitulada será el uh, próximo domingo a partir de las 12 del día en el canal del Festival Internacional Cervantino. For all the people that is watching us, the, 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 we will have uh, another transmission of this panel. Next Sunday will be available with subtitles in Spanish for all the people that were watching us. So we will be able to see us again. And uh, uh, for all who want to, <coughs> uh, thank you for everyone to uh, Ariadna, Ariadna, uh, for mm -hmm. for being able for 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 keeping us updated, uh, Fernanda, Yadira, and of course the Festival Cervantino and Joaquin for translation. Also, thank you very much. And uh, I hope to see you uh, to see you next year at the Festival Cervantino. You will be you will will be the bewitched by the magic of a city like Guanajuato. We you yeah. all have to come. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much and a big applause for everyone. Okay, guys. And then, thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you all.